Good morning. Welcome to Blue Force's commercial workshop at the APS March meeting 2022. Uh, this is a pre-recorded talk. Um, the title of the talk today is Quantum Applications in the Blue Force Measurement System. What I want to do is to give an overview of some of our research and new solutions that we are uh, introducing to optimize and improve the Blue Force system for quantum measurements and quantum computing. Uh, my name is Russell Lake. I'm leading our effort towards improving and enabling quantum measurements in the Blue Force system. Don't hesitate to reach out with questions after the talk. Here is my contact information. So what I want to do is to organize this into four sections. First is a background information about Blue Force. Part one is an overview of our efforts uh, on quantum measurement research at Blue Force. Then I describe a few examples of new solutions um, in this area. And finally, conclusions and discussion. Uh, so to start with, uh, Blue Force uh, manufactures uh, dilution refrigerator measurement systems. We were founded in 2008 uh, as a startup or spinoff from Alta University. We're a growing company. We have now over 300 employees. Here's a photograph of the whole team uh, prior to COVID in our manufacturing facility, our headquarters in Helsinki in Finland, uh, shown here. So this is, this is the headquarters. We do a lot of production in Finland. And we also now have new offices around the world. Uh, notably, we have a new uh, measurement lab in Delft in the Netherlands um, to be used as a user facility for uh, companies and groups that need measurement services. We also have a few offices, sales offices around the world. Here's a simplified overview of our product catalog. Uh, we have different sizes of systems. All of these systems reach uh, millikelvin temperatures. They're dilution refrigerator measurement systems. Uh, so to begin with, the SD is the smallest system. It has a fast turnaround time. Um, the LD is a little bit larger. Um, it, ha it is our most popular system, and there is more room to fit uh, wiring infrastructure uh, for measurements. It's some and the XLD system is a scaled up larger version that is now targeted towards uh, the quantum computing research community. Um, we are promoting a way of working with the XLD uh, with side loading modules, which I'll talk about in a few minutes, um, that enable uh, bigger experiments with more experimental infrastructure. And then we have the LH, which has a different uh, form factor um, specifically, it can be inserted into a beam line or be used in, as part of a detector array um, thanks to this horizontal uh, mounting scheme. Looking forward, uh, earlier this year we introduced a new concept called the KIDE, which is a large-scale uh, cooling platform uh, that addresses the near to intermediate term goals of quantum computing community. Um, so this is a cryogenic platform um, that is intended to serve the, the roadmaps that, that industry is formulating for large-scale quantum computing experiments. Um, importantly, even as we grow the size of the system, we maintain the same kind of user access that we had with smaller systems. Um, another important feature is that we have multiple and dedicated cooling units. So for example, we can separate operational heat loads uh, from, the, from the heat loads of the payload uh, that is being cooled um, to offer better performance all around. And another uh, important feature of the geometry of this system is that it is expandable into clusters. So this can be uh, clustered for very large experiments. So on the way towards these large scale uh, cooling platforms, I want to give uh, an example or some ideas about the kind of research we're doing right now for, uh, for near-term experiments. So this is an overview of quantum measurement research at Blue Force. 
Um, so I start with this uh, photo. This is from the Swiss group from ETH Zurich, uh, in, uh, described in the reference below. And what you see here um, is an XLD side loader uh, that includes a number of sub-components that have to work together. Uh, and at Blue Forest, we are working on each of these, of these parts. So first, we have the interconnects. We have the lines required to send signals from room temperature into the cryogenic environment. Um, we need filters to clean up the signals and to suppress noise that can leak from uh, higher temperature stages into the sample space. Um, we need to have optimized readout and we need to have diagnostic tools for understanding how good the readout is. And we also have to provide a good environment for the quantum device itself. And so in the following parts of this talk, I'm going to give examples of what we're doing uh, in, to support and improve each of these subcomponents of the system that need to be working together. So the first example is the high density wiring, which is a, is a solution for the XLD uh, system where wiring can be fitted and installed on the bench top and then the entire system can be um, and then the entire module can be fitted into the system to enable a vast scale up in the experimental wiring that is possible. In addition, like I mentioned, filtering is extremely important. Um, and so we have launched an, bl the Blue Force IR filter. So this is, as I'll talk about in a few minutes, this is a device that can absorb and dissipate high energy photons that could cause problems, especially for superconducting qubits. Um, in terms of diagnostics, we have introduced a cryogenic variable temperature noise source that can be used for uh, characterization of amplifier chains in the cryogenic environment. Um, so this can be used for performing Y factor measurements of amplifiers or other kinds of experiments that require controlled and well-defined amounts of added noise to be sent into the system. And finally, the new thing that I'll introduce today um, is an integrated readout module uh, that includes a parametric amplifier, in particular, a three-wave mixing tupa, which I'll talk about in a few minutes. So high-density wiring um, is a solution that supports a large amount of control coaxial lines in an XLD side loader. For example, if you fill all six ports with high density wiring. This offers over 1,000 uh, lines. It comes in quantas, if you will, of 24 pieces, which means that we have multi-connectors that actually, where 12 channels can be mated identically, or 12 channels can be mated at this simultaneously. Um, this technology is built on our well-known coax technology for the input lines, uh, silver plated copper nickel coaxes. Um, and due to this modular form factor, we can do maintenance easily on very large uh, experimental wiring infrastructures. Um, a new thing that is, is coming very soon are high density filter banks, such as what you see on the figure on the right. Um, Right now, we offer high-density attenuator blocks, like in the figure in the middle. Um, but it is, it is known that we have to do even better with our cleanup of the signals coming into the, into the fridge for uh, quantum computing measurements. So especially low-pass filters will be required in a form factor that is compatible with high-density wiring. In terms of filtering, as I mentioned, uh, the Blue Force IR filter is a coaxial filter that absorbs and blocks infrared radiation. Uh, this is something that the community has known for a long time is required in order to get uh, really high performance, especially from superconducting qubits. Um, and the main innovation here is that we have a manufacturable process that allows us to scale this up and make uh, reliable and reproducible filters. So I'm showing some statistical data on the right of the S S11 and the S21 for this kind of filter. Um, below six gigahertz, it has, has uh, 
return loss in excess of, of 25 dB in this plot. And then in terms of the loss, it's rather low loss, less than a dB in this room temperature measurement, which is important for setups where people are measuring in reflection. And this filter also, um, the loss of the filter would also contribute to the signal to noise ratio. So this is a, a low loss microwave absorber material that then attenuates at very high frequencies at a few hundred gigahertz. Um, it's designed to protect quantum devices from unwanted radiative heating and also decoherence, especially for superconducting devices, while still enabling high signal fidelity. If you're interested in more of the physics of these kinds of processes, I would encourage you to check out this, set, this talk in Y40.2 uh, from the Yale group um, that talks in more detail about quasi-particle generation in superconducting films and how to filter. Uh, to improve performance. So just as a summary, um, these are the specifications for the Blue Force IR filter. Um, it is primarily intended for uh, qubit drive lines in circuit quantum electrodynamics experiments where we have very low insertion loss uh, below 1 dB um, and also very high return loss. And um, the point here is that with the figure on the right, that even if you have thermalized components um, of only a few Kelvin, there is this tail in the spectral radiance from the black body that can cause uh, a non-negligible uh, population of high energy or infrared photons that can cause problems. And this is the kind of filter you would need to block those relatively high energy uh, photons so that they can be thermalized. And I also list a couple of uh, literature examples where this type of filter uh, is used. Um, part two, we're also, look, we're also working with, as I mentioned, diagnostics for readout, specifically the cryogenic variable temperature noise source. Um, so this is a device that goes inside the cryostat. It's an inline variable temperature load that can add a controlled amount of noise to an amplifier cascade so that you can do Y-factor characterization to figure out the intrinsic noise added by an amplifier uh, in the cryogenic environment. Um, you can, it can be fit into the system uh, with microwave switches so that you can toggle between different amplifier pathways and figure out uh, what is the noise temperature of some device under test that may be operating at the millikelvin or operating at a few Kelvin. Importantly, uh, the emitted noise has enough dynamic range that we can characterize parametric amplifiers in addition to state-of-the-art hemped amplifiers. And there is a lot more detail in this reference I'm showing here uh, that we published last year. So for example, by toggling between these two different pathways, um, we can measure uh, the gain of a parametric amplifier and then use the noise source in order to infer or measure its, its noise temperature. So we've done this for some specific examples um, while, get, while developing this product. And so this is data from, from the reference I just showed. Um, but what you can do with this noise source uh, is that you can change its temperature to add a controlled amount of input noise uh, through your cascade of amplifiers. And so at the very lowest thermodynamic temperatures of the noise source, you're actually emitting quantum noise, as shown by this equation here. Um, and then at higher temperatures, you emit the Johnson-Nyquist noise of a 50 ohm uh, resistor. And so what we see when we measure with a spectrum analyzer is that we get these really nice uh, linear fits um, that can be used to measure uh, the noise temperature of the amplifier chain uh, from the offset of these, of these linear fits. So we taken together, we can, we can do this for different uh, configurations, different, uh, different types of amplifiers, and we can measure system noise. Um, so for example, the green diamonds show the system noise for um, an, a tra traveling wave parametric amplifier. This is an old variant that's in the four wave mixing mode. Um, and then we can compare that to the noise from just the cryogenic hemped amplifiers. 
and then we can uh, re remove the contribution from the hemp and then measure the intrinsic noise added by the parametric amplifier. And so this is a very useful technique for debugging and optimizing uh, readout in quantum computing systems. We've also done this with higher gain amplifiers, such as this JPA that was made by NIST and Fermilab. Um, the results are reported in this APL paper from last year. Um, and what we see is that we can, in an, even when the amplifier has very high gain, it may also be adding noise, and we can use our technique to, to determine this. But if you can operate the amplifier at about 10 megahertz detuned from the pump frequency of this JPA, the system noise actually approaches uh, the quantum limit. So these are just a couple of measurement examples I wanted to bring up to show how this blue force cryogenic variable temperature noise source can be employed uh, to measure various quantities. So this sets the stage for uh, a new solution that I want to bring up today, um, and that is an integrated readout module uh, for microwaves that includes a parametric amplifier. And so this is a solution that's going to be coming from Blue Force in the very near future. Um, and what we are doing is to package uh, this module with everything you need for, for qubit readout, um, for example. So this would include a parametric amplifier, or TUPA in this, in this case, which is actually a three-wave mixing TUPA, as I'll show in a moment. Um, a low noise amplifier, a uh, hemp that would be operated at the 3 Kelvin stage. Uh, it includes the RF coaxial wiring kit needed to make this all work. And in addition, it includes a, a modular uh, set of the filters, isolators, and circulators that are required for the input and output from these amplifiers. And finally, it also includes a DC bias where we have a solution for the filtering, in this case offered by the Q-Devil Q-Filter. Here are some example data. Um, the key capabilities and benefits of this uh, TUPA when it's integrated into our system include wide gain bandwidth, high gain, um, a separation between the pump frequency and the signal frequency so that you do not crowd your uh, signal frequencies with this strong pump. That's the advantage of three-wave mixing in this case. Um, low added noise from the TUPA of around 300 millikelvin uh, as representative data. Um, and that this is pre-assembled and ready to use as a module um, so that we can provide confidence that the system uh, will work um, when you receive it. Here are some spec sheets for our, our traveling wave parametric amplifier kit. <clears throat> the expected performance is between uh, 4 gigahertz and 8 gigahertz, um, with 80% of the gain, the, ga the gain and 80% of the band uh, at the level of at least 15 dB. Um, representative added noise for 95% of the band is around 300 millikelvin. Um, and for, depending on your uh, configuration, a uh, reasonable assumption for the SNR improvement is around 9 dB uh, with respect to having a setup where you only have a hemp. So we're really excited about this new solution that's going to be uh, coming to market very soon. In addition, in order to check that we actually do have good signal to noise ratio, um, we've used this setup to do repeated measurements of a qubit to obtain uh, single shot readout histograms uh, for a transmon qubit that's dispersively coupled. Um, and for this set of parameters used for readout, we get about 97% fidelity for single shot measurements. And of course, this depends a lot on the device you choose and also the pulse sequences that you employ. Nevertheless, it, it is a good check that we can achieve high readout fidelity um, which is consistent with the system noise temperature that we measure uh, for this amplifier. So in conclusion, uh, ongoing work at Blue Force supports and enables quantum measurements um, in the near term, and we have a plan to scale these systems to larger cryogenic platforms. One of the, the key philosophies that is 
that is driving our innovation is that we want to be forward compatible with the very large systems. So for example, the high density wiring will also uh, support large numbers of interconnects for the large scale uh, cooling platforms such as the KIDA I showed briefly. Um, I also showed in the talk specific examples of the solutions we are, we are deploying to support quantum measurements and quantum computing, including the high density wiring, IR filters, cryogenic variable temperature noise source with some measurement examples. And finally, the new thing, which is the integrated readout module that includes a parametric amplifier that we want to launch very soon. Um, so taken together, we seek to provide the technology leadership in millikelvin quantum applications uh, to make measurements faster and easier for the end user. So if you want to learn more, uh, please check out some of our recent uh, public outputs, including these journal articles, uh, a couple of new application notes or from, from the past year on our website. Um, and then at APS, we have two different scientific talks. One, calibrated microwave measurements of qubit driveline components at millikelvin temperatures. That includes a, a very close look at the microwave performance of the interconnects that we provide. And then also a theory talk, exact parameterization of qubit dynamics with coupling to a resistive element in the driveline. This is a close look at how the measurement lines can influence your qubit um, through thermal noise and how do we include that in the Hamiltonian. In addition, uh, we have some, a YouTube video that shows this modular way of working with the XLD side loader uh, in this link. And then there is a couple of uh, recent publications in the trade press about uh, microwave measurements in the cryogenic environment in general. Thanks very much for your attention. I'd be happy to take uh, any questions by email or then in the chat.